So in the meditation instruction, that's very simple and clear. So we say, do your practice, do your breathing, right? Breathing from your lower belly, letting your energy come down. And most important is whatever phrase you do or mantra, doesn't matter, is not pushing away thinking and feeling and not holding on to it. I know I probably say this all of the time, but it's, it's still something I <laughs> try to do as well um, when I do sitting meditation. And just like we said before, it's, it's very easy. We, we, are, we are in the habit of pushing away things that are uncomfortable, pushing away things that we don't like. And the problem with that is that is the definition of suffering, right? The holding we already understand. If we hold stuff, we understand what happens. But the pushing away is very interesting. Usually we don't see it. Um, so that's a technique we use. And what happens when we do that is, again, we start to see everything exactly as it is. So we get to see our anger as anger, not good or bad, like Julie mentioned this, not, there's not the like or dislike, um, should I have it or not have it, is looking at it as truth. We teach a lot about truth in our school, right? So first we always say, the first step is to return to this mind that re just reflects everything right? So we can perceive things how they are, because usually it's not like that. In fact, uh, if you read of any Zen Master Sung Song's books, it always says, the sky is blue, the trees green, dogs barking will full of sugar sweet, right? A lot of the times we're not like that. Oh, the sky is gray today. I don't like gray. It's going to be too cold and then I won't be able to do this. Or that dog's barking so loud, it's ruining my meditation. I just want quiet, right? So it's, again, it's always this pushing and grasping that causes dissatisfaction. So if we can just start to see things as anger is truth, fear is truth, and dig in deeper, where does this fear come from? Where does anger come from? Really investigate it. And then when you come up with the answer with that, then investigate even deeper, right? We have a saying um, in our I know Jeff mentions this a lot in the Avant Tamsaka Sutra that everything comes from mind alone. It's a wonderful teaching and it really points to a lot of things. But again, our questioning always points us back to don't know. So if everything comes from mind alone, then where does mind come from? Eventually you get to this place where we don't know. And from that place, that's where everything is stable. There's no moving, there's no coming, there's no going. There's no strength, there's no weakness, it's just truth. And when we do that technique during our sitting practice, that's a technique we use when we're walking, when we're driving a car, when we're talking to a loved one, when we're having an argument. Something that Latsu said that was very interesting, he said, be careful or pay attention to your thoughts because your thoughts become words. Pay attention to your words because your words become actions. Pay attention to your actions because your actions become habits and pay attention to your habits because your habits become, quote, character. That means me or I or Jason. Pay attention to your character, your character because your character becomes destiny or fate. We can say karma or uh, maybe the way we would say it, right? So usually we don't see that whole chain, right? We see the result, anger, fear, happiness, whatever it is. But the practice really helps us start to look back a little bit closer, right? We get to start seeing our habits. We get to start seeing our actions and our words. And then if we go back by using this questioning, what is this? We're getting back to watching our thinking. But where does thinking come from? I don't even know. We need to investigate. We need to look in deeper. So where, where does anger come from? What is it? From that place, that's where we're going to find clarity, compassion, and strength.